We're looking now at Verbum 9. We just had an upgrade a little more than a month ago, and I want to talk a little bit about how to do research for a concrete project. So suppose we're going to do research for the upcoming second Sunday of Advent. As I record this, it's year B, so I could go right here on my home screen to the Catholic Daily Readings, but suppose I don't like the home screen or it doesn't show up on my home screen. We just get rid of it again. The home screen is like a window shade. We can click on the library icon here and type in this search bar, Catholic Daily Readings. This will get me to the Catholic Lectionary. And you can see it's already said I'm recording this on December 1st. This upcoming Sunday is December 6th. So I type that in. Second Sunday of Advent. And let's suppose I want to research just the Gospel for the sake of discussion. So I'm going to click here, Gospel Mark 1, 1 through 18. I click on that. And it's going to appear in my default Bible. This is the new American Bible, Revised Edition, the translation we reveal at Mass. Just to simplify things, I'm going to go ahead and get rid of the lectionary. And let's suppose I want to take some notes as I do this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go here to my Tools menu. I'm going to click on Notes. If perchance I don't have notes here saved at the top of my Tools menu, I can just type in Notes here at the top and it'll come right up. In any case, I click on Notes. I already have it here. And you can see I've taken a lot of notes here on Verbum before. But suppose I want to start a brand new project. So I want to create my own notebook. So I'm going to have the hamburger menu here pushed. You can see it comes on and off. And I'm going to click on this little notebook icon. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit the plus button here, which starts a new notebook. Now, you can see I choose to organize my notebooks by date. I, I start the titles of all of my notebooks with the date. So today is the 1st of December 2020, and I'm just going to call this Second Advent and then B in parentheses for year B. So I'm going to just start that right there, and I'm going to first read the biblical text here in the English. The beginning of the Gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. As it is written in Isaiah the prophet, and again, I've got all my study notes here, you can see this comes from the Catholic Study Bible. Although Mark attributes the prophecy to Isaiah, the text is a combination of Malachi chapter 3, verse 1, Isaiah chapter 40, verse 3, Exodus chapter 23, verse 20, as well as in a few other places. So I'm reading all of this, and I'm looking for things that are going to draw my attention. And I immediately realize that we have here John the Baptist. Now I have a few options for further research. One thing I can do, and this is new in Verbum 9, is to click this icon, the Factbook Visual Finder. If I click on that, what it's going to do is underline things that I can simply double click and learn more about. So suppose I want to study more about what baptism meant. So I'm going to just double click that word baptized and see what comes up here. You can see the first thing it does is it opens up my default lexicon. You probably don't have this in your library. I paid extra for it because it's really, really handy. So we'll ignore that for the time being. But you can see here the fact book brings up things. People in Jerusalem hearing John, people in Jerusalem, people in Judea hearing John. We're going to just click on that one just to see what shows up. All of these fact book things, this is a data set put together by Verbum to help get like information in one place. So I could scroll through that. You can see it conjures up this events. John the Baptist appears in the wilderness, and we can see it's here with its parallels in Matthew, Luke, and John. So if I want, I could click on that event. could also click on John the Baptist. Why don't we do that? And we can see that here in the fact book, I have information about John the Baptist. Now notice what it does. It pulls up what it calls a key article. And this is taken from my prioritized resource. So what I like here is that it takes me to the Anchor Yale Bible Dictionary, which is, again, that top flight A-list resource. It's a six-volume set of information about the background of the Bible, major characters, historical background, literary background, the sociology, etc. So John the Baptist, I can read all about this. So suppose I want to read a little bit more in depth. It's already right here. I can click on different parts. So I want to go to Mark, the source, character, and use. So let's see what this article says about Mark's use of the John the Baptist figure. 
and it comes up here in a separate window. Now suppose I'm reading this and I'm interested. At the beginning of Mark's story of Jesus, John appears prominently as a preacher and baptizer to whom many people, including Jesus of Nazareth, responded. As Jesus is baptized, God tells him that he is his son. After John is arrested, Jesus begins his own preaching mission in Galilee. Suppose I want to hold this information and take a note on it. What I can do is I can just write this and then put add note. And this will bring up my note item here. And the first thing I'm going to want to do is place this in the notebook that I just made. So I could, I could, again, just by putting the date, I'll bring up the notebook I created here just a moment ago. So this will now be inserted into my notebook. And what I can do is write information, background on how Mark portrays John, excuse me, John the Baptist. And I can even add tags. This is very important to do as well. Because what this means is that every other time I'm looking about anything dealing with John the Baptist, I can, it'll come up in my notes when I go search them. Also, this is relevant to Isaiah because Mark cites Isaiah's, uh, Isaiah chapter 40, verse 3. So I might add that to a tag. So you can say I've taken my note here and it's saved automatically in Verbum. I don't have to do anything more with it. If I wanted to, I could open it up just to make it a little easier to type if I wanted to say a little more, but I usually don't. With my notes, I tend to want to just anchor some main text and then put a little annotation just so I can figure out what I was thinking when I was taking it down. So that is that. I read on here in my main source. This is interesting over here. The following observations may be made about how John the Baptist fits into Mark as a story, and about what we learn concerning John beyond what is found in Josephus. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to highlight this whole paragraph. Again, I'm going to click my little note button here, which will start a new note. And I'm just going to write here, brief summary of how John the Baptist, often abbreviated JBAP among some scholars, of how JBAP is treated in Mark's gospel. Lovely. And once again, I'm going to add my tag, John the Baptist. I may also add the tag, Mark. This is just useful, so that way if I'm doing another project later on, I can go back and see, oh, I've already done some note-taking about John the Baptist and Mark. I might even add, let's add a couple more tags. Let's talk about Elijah. Let's talk about, again, Isaiah, because his prophecies are being fulfilled. And let's even just talk more generally about prophets. Prophets. There we go. So I can add as many tags as, as I want, and this will be helpful if I want to search my notes later for information. So I'm done with all of that. Suppose I want to take this entire paragraph and put it in a Word document and block quote it. I can do that, but before I do, I want to come here to the three vertical three dot menu and make sure that I've got my citations on. I want to make sure that it does citations automatically. So we are going to copy footnotes. Copy citations, yes. Hyperlink copy citations, yes. I usually leave copy footnotes off. So once we've done that, again, Verbum automatically saves things. I don't have to hit a save button. So I'm going to copy this whole paragraph. I'm going to hit the copy button. Then I'm going to come to a Word document. Again, I might type something in. Block quote from AYBD. I'd want to give some kind of a tag before using this in research. And then I hit Control V, and behold, the entire, I can even make this look like a block quote. But notice my footnote is already here. Now this is very important. I always want to double check my footnote to make sure that it's accurate. Paul W. Hollenbach, that is indeed the author of this article. John the Baptist, that's indeed the title of the article. However, there's some little glitches in the footnotes sometimes when they're done automatically. Here, the proper citation style would then be in the Anchor Yale Bible Dictionary. The mention of the editor comes afterwards, so I'm going to move it like this. I always tell people you are responsible for your own footnotes. You cannot defer this task to verbum without thinking. I don't need that comma. New York, Doubleday, 1992, it's correct. Again, page 888. That's not good enough because I need to know what volume I'm in. To make sure that I can see that, I go to my visual filters, make sure to show page numbers is on, and then scroll up to find an indication of a page number. This is volume three 
page 888. So I'm going to come in here, insert the volume number and a colon, and I have a perfect footnote right here. Last thing we're going to do here, suppose I want to build a bibliography for some research that I'm doing. I'm going to come here to the Docs menu, click New, and I'm going to do a new bibliography. It'll open. I'm going to call this Second Advent B. And all I got to do is come back to this thing that I pretty much anywhere in the article. So I just want to take say these two paragraphs that I've been noting and all I have to do is drag them over here and it will provide me a citation for the entire work. Once again, Paul W. Hollenbach, that's correct. Article title, John the Baptist, that's correct. Again, if I want to verify to make sure this is correct, all I've got to do is come over, click on the next article, scroll up and I can see that yes, Paul W. Hollenbach is indeed the correct author. At the time he wrote this, he was a professor of religious studies at Iowa State University in Ames, Iowa. Go figure. So, Paul W. Hollenbach, John the Baptist, that's the name of the article. I can verify that right there, indeed, name of the article. But again, this isn't correct right here. So I can even insert notes here and I'll just like... So what I'll do, because I can insert notes here, I'll just right edit this citation and so when I do that I can export this I'm going to send to a new Microsoft Word document and you can see it gives me everything I've exported so I can just pull this aside if I want to. Again, bibliographies always begin a new page, so we can just control enter. Here's a new page. We don't need bibliography. Control V. Come over here and make sure I format it correctly. So I'm going to come over here. Hanging indent, always in a bibliography, half centimeter. I only want three points after each citation. That makes it look correct. Of course, we want the font to be uniform, so we'll put that in Times New Roman. Paul W. Hollenbach, John the Baptist. However, again, in the Anchor Yale Bible Dictionary. Control X that. Edited by, Control V that. Get rid of the superfluous verbiage there. David Noel Friedman. And again, I have to have the, the bounds of the article. I have to have both the volume as well as the first and last page. So to get that information, I just come back to my article. I see that this article begins on page 887 of volume 3. And the article will conclude on page 899. So that's going to be volume 3, page 887 through 899, New York Doubleday, 1992, and that is a perfect citation. Only other thing I might want to do is put my footnote and my block quote in the same font as the rest of the document. So we'll put that in Times New Roman block quote also should be a little smaller, so this should be 11 point font. Behold, we have a nice document here. Footnote should be 10 point font, Times New Roman, so having made those changes, we have a nifty little document here that is properly formatted.